All right, Coach, homecoming victory over Arizona State back on the winning track. Uh, what are your thoughts after uh, thinking about it for the last couple of days? Well, it was obviously good to get back after two long weeks, um, get back to winning at home. And, um, you know, I, I think there was a lot of relief amongst our players. And um, I thought in general we played really well in a lot of aspects of the game. I thought we played great on special teams. I thought we played great on defense. Um, we moved the ball well on offense. We just screwed up with some turnovers and, and some really critical red zone turnovers. Yeah, I'm guessing you were not surprised by the defensive improvement. You sort of hinted at it all week. Just a, a lot of pride on that side of the ball, particularly from the, the veteran leaders. Yeah, I think it showed up. I think it was a great great job by the coaches during the week. Um, I thought it was a great job by the players. Um, some really good halftime adjustments on defense, installing some different stuff uh, to really help us shut them down in the second half. And so uh, it, was, it was great to get back to playing good defense, 250 total yards for a team that was over, two, over 450 coming in and um, really potentially could have given up no points if it wasn't for us screwing up on offense. A lot of guys have been good teammates this year. You've talked about Robert Wood sacrificing himself. Curtis McNeil is another guy who sacrificed himself. He got his big opportunity Saturday, and, and he really took it. Yeah, he did. It was good. You know, Curtis has been banged up, really hasn't been healthy for a while now. And so to have him back what was very critical, especially with Silas out, not able to play at all. So um, great job by him, great job up front by the offensive line. Um, you know, the two left tackles for a true freshman, Max Turk and Andre Walker as a true sophomore. I thought they played great, and um, it was really good to see. Marquis Lee, it seems like you're having fun finding ways to use him. You threw him in on defense for a snap, a couple direct snaps on offense. Are you just trying to keep pushing and, and keep finding ways that he can impact the game? Yeah, uh, he's such a dynamic player, and um, any time it, it – is you know anytime that you do some different things with people it makes people pa uh, waste practice time on it so um, uh, we're very fortunate that he has such great football awareness that he's able to do all those things um, physically and mentally you talked about hoping matt would slow down the interceptions setting a goal not to throw any for the final three games he threw three can you talk about what you saw and, and, and what were the reasons behind him well i think you've got to evaluate the, the interceptions um you know sometimes you throw them to him and they drop them and so uh he had two interceptions really were not his fault um two things that that we didn't do around him and, and you can't fault him for those um you know so uh I know that, that he's he's aware of it. He didn't like it. Um, you know, he's thrown a million touchdowns too at the same time. And so uh, we've improved in a lot of areas as a team, offense, defense. Um, you know, and for whatever reason, we have not improved in turnovers on offense, but, but we've improved on defense. So um, we'll try to fix it this week. You called it a, a tricky game coming down off of Oregon before UCLA. Talk about your captains and leaders. I guess Colin Holmes was sort of caught on TV giving a pretty public motivational speech on the sidelines. Uh, talk about the, your leaders and how they stepped up this week to get the guys across the finish line. Well, it was definitely set up as a, as a trap game. You know, you get a noon kickoff, um, you know, the, the hangover of the big game versus Oregon and, you know, late arriving crowd because of the noon kickoff. It just, um, those game and then sandwiched in between a rivalry game, you know, those are the games over years that, that programs um, always struggle with. And so it was really good to see our players um, come out with a great mindset. Really outside of the turnovers on offense, um, the game's really lopsided in all phases and really could have been a blowout. But um, we, we screwed that up by turning it over. So we're really proud of the players um, and their energy level in the game too. In a sense, that was, the, that was a Pac-12 quarterfinal with a semifinal coming up this week against UCLA. How much are you embracing the sort of playoff format and concept and, and telling the guys about it? Yeah, it, it was unusual after our two losses to still be in that position. Um, and it really has become a playoff mentality. And um, we were able to get the first round over with, and now we're on to the next one. So uh, it's going to be a very exciting game versus a team that's playing really well. How has Jim Mora turned things around at UCLA? Well, I think first off, off offensively. Um, they're very dynamic on offense. They're very well coached by Noel Mazzoni, and um, they do a great job with a freshman quarterback and you know, th running and throwing. So um, obviously he's done a great job with the program, as you can tell from the win-loss, but um, specifically with the offense um, and their explosiveness. Yeah, how much of the offensive turnaround is that freshman quarterback, Brett Humley? Yeah, he's playing great. You know, you, you look for freshmen to make a bunch of mistakes, um, you know, at the quarterback position, and, um, and he's not doing it. So um, they've done a great job with him. Jonathan Franklin's a guy that you've played against a few times, a running back. He's had a huge career there. Where does he rank among the backs you've seen on tape uh, this year? Yeah, he does a great job. Rarely ever fumbles the ball. Um, very physical, fast, you know, all around. You know, you don't break those records um, by not being an all-around guy. And he's catching the ball now out of the backfield with this new system, too. 
Anthony Barr has stepped up to lead that defense. What do you see from the Bruins defensively? Yeah, great, great move by them. You know, moving him over there and um, has really helped him with the pass rush. Uh, they're getting almost as many sacks as anybody in the country. Um, they're way up there in the rankings and, and really good third down rushers. So, um, led by Anthony and, and 56. You've been around some great uh, rivalries in the NFL and in college. What makes this one special? Uh, the location. Um, you know, <clears throat> because of so many SCL. Uh, UCLA people working together, living together. Um, I think that's what makes it so unique. Um, and it's just, it's always so exciting whether it's there or whether it's here. Do you have a favorite moment or game that sticks out when you think about the USC UCLA rivalry that you've been a part of? Oh, I, I don't know. I mean, obviously last year was pretty neat for us. Um, you know, pr probably maybe even also to our first year here the first time. Um, you know, I think they were ranked at the time and we were just kind of getting going and it was the end of our season and um, we had started playing a little bit better and um, and we were able to, to get them that day. Is it a good thing that the game is relevant in the sense that you know, both programs are, are up right now? Yeah, I think it's really good. Um, it's good for the city. Um, it's the way it should be. Um, but it, it was that way last year too. People all forget that this is the second year in a row that these two teams have played for the conference champion for the South Conference for the South Championship. That game will be at uh, noon at the Rose Bowl on Saturday. We'll see you there, Coach. All right. Thanks, Jordan.